everyone. This is Maureen wishing you a happy afternoon. And just as promised, I wanted to show you my upstairs library. This is actually kind of a, a linen-like closet that I was uh, permitted to put my crafting items in so they didn't clutter up the house, which of course I think is a brilliant idea. So besides having crafty items down here, the bags underneath at the very bottom are lace making supplies. The basket has miscellaneous sewing items or some embroidery items back there, a bag of other sundries, some paints, my paint brushes, dresses for my one doll that's in the living room, which you can see pictures of on my Instagram, my um, flax fiber arts, some other fiber arts in here, a couple other books. Um, besides all of this crafty goodness that's in here that's stored away safely from the animals and a replica gun, not a, it's not fireable or anything. It's like a cap gun, but I made it look extra old. Anyway, besides that and a few embroidery kits that you can see in the back, I have my library of books that I use and reference the most often. And I actually have a couple different spots. Um, on the far left, you're seeing the toys, trifles, and trinkets, which actually is a much bigger book than I expected it to be. And it's full of information in regards to metal items found in the Thames. I just recently got it used, and this is a book I'm certainly going to have to read a bit more about to find out about some other information, but it looks very fascinating. A History of Toys by Antonia Fraser, which is fantastic. I bought this one used as well. It unfortunately has some tape around the, the edges, but other than that, it's a sound book. Lots of information on dolls and all sorts of other toys, medieval going forward. Um, I found this price guide for dolls, believe it or not. And I don't normally go for that kind of thing, but there were such great descriptions in there that I could use that in the future if I get around the opportunity to write my book about historical dolls, costuming, and other items. Dolls of Yesterday, which also has some great medieval references in there. I located this for two bucks at my local Books A Million. So, sometimes you can find a little treasure here and there. We have uh, Foreign Brides, which actually looks like someone's attempt at making medieval looking dolls and it has some information but some good visual inspiration more than anything. Dolls and Puppets by Max von Bowen, also a very good uh, reference, has medieval items, uh, crash dolls, Santos dolls, all of the different kinds. And then I have the this book, Making Historical Costume Dolls more of a learning how to make them and dress them. Still very useful though because a lot of the items are in period looking clothing. And then I had the Royal School of Needleworks. Not the complete series but most of the books in regards to certain techniques of embroidery. And then I have, now this is a three part exploring Elizabethan embroidery and they have embroidery accessories and a fest of Elizabethan embroidery. All of them are based on some um, historical patterns and inspired by Elizabethan embroidery from the time frame. More of a secondary source, but really interesting if you wanted to get patterns for practice within a pattern that is close to what, the, rep, what represents the Elizabethan cruel embroidery. Totally recommend recommend it. It's a good starting point when you're starting out. A Skull House for the Needle is period correct patterns actually taken from actual pieces of embroidery so you, that you can move from practicing to then doing the pattern from history. I've already spoken about Sewing Vintage Style which has some other wonderful projects. We also have the Needles Workers Constant Companion, which has been reprinted several different times. That also works not just with 
sewing it just sewing embroidery knitting all sorts of different fiber arts are in that book it's a little bit of everything which is useful when maybe you need a small bit of reference if you're repairing us and darning a sock for example okay you have that for reference that you can just kind of pull another great one is the um, good housekeeping's book of needlework is great better homes and gardens i think also made a book very similar they're very handy to have if you just need a quick reference then i have this book in regards to fashion which goes over fashion history period and time frames these three are very similar but they have different pieces of information where you're going over mode and costume which is in black and white this has some mild bits of color and then this has mild bits of color plus um, images of extent garments so a little different situation these are more fiber arts books this one's in regards to textile fibers this is the Tudor Taylor research in regards to archaeological textiles really good one if you can get it right from the website highly recommend it very good read a yarn from wild nettles which talks about vegetable fibers specifically nettles that you can find out in the woods pens and needles talks about the history specifically about bear with me here one of my current projects wants to travel outside the realm of our little closet here there we go Pens and Needles deals with the history of how powerful needlework was within period. Another great archaeological textile read if you get an opportunity. This one is Queen Elizabeth's Wardrobe Unlocked by Janet Arnold. If you're into the Elizabethan Tudor period, very super handy. It's her entire inventory, basically as Janet Arnold has written it. And it's it's one of my first sources for period fashion dolls. So for me, it's yet again, another important Janet Arnold book. And I have Patterns of Fashion one, that's three, that's four, and that's five. So I have these up on their side here. They are meant more to lay down, but I just don't have that kind of room in this closet. But this is a very deep bookshelf. So these aren't getting smushed at the end. They're lined up pretty much, other than that paper bag that back there. So I mean, they are not laying on their end, but they're not getting squished. Uh, creating historical clothes was a, a surprising one. It's, a, it's great to give you patterns for general silhouettes from not just Tudor time frames, but actually through Victorian. So I don't have a lot of Victorian books, so this gives me sort of just my tiptoes into Victorian patterns if I needed it. But I have some other Tudor references that are a little better than this, but this is not bad for someone who wanted a book that covered several time periods and needed the drawn out patterns. I mean, the cover is just absolutely gorgeous. This is one of my favorite paintings. But I mean, you'd have to scale these up and figure out proportions, but it's it's got good reviews. It's like four out of five stars on Amazon. And it has directions on the patterns. So it's it's not a bad place to start if you're not used to reading pattern books. And this person more worked a little bit in theater, so take that for, for what it is. But you have to create the appropriate silhouette to get it to look right. So, I, I mean, you don't follow the pattern, the clothing is just not going to sit right. So then I also have the uh, draping period costumes and historical wigs. Uh, draping is always very important, as well as the, the wig styling helps me do not just people wigs, so to speak, but it helps me do doll wigs. Because if I can do it, then I just have to do it in miniature. But uh, so spiral bound on the inside with a hardcover on the outside, they're pretty sturdy books. Um, then I have, of course, the wonderful American Duchess ladies, and they have their 18th century beauty book, which is newer, and then their 18th century dressmaking, which a little about me. I started with 
Revolutionary War reenacting at first. And so for me, they just, they, they have it all. It is just what I would have wanted when, when I started reenacting back in the mid nineties, which for me was, was middle school. So this would have been, if I would have had allowance money, I would have spent it on these books. That's for sure. Even back then. And I have costume close up and then 18th century clothing of Williamsburg. I believe these are written by the same person. Let's see, there's Linda Bowman on that. Okay, Linda Baumgarten. Linda Baumgarten and John Watson. Okay, so Linda Baumgarten wrote both of those. And then there's another one that she has, which I plan on getting, that will be added in here. Um, just to go with covering the 18th century. And because we have talked about no 17th century love, we do have at least book one and book two of 17th century women's dress patterns, which I kick butt. I really kind of put the V&A's book writing very much up there, close to Miss Janet Arnold. It's, it's well researched. There's a lot of information. There's pictures, you name it. These, these are worth getting. They're worth buying used as well. I mean, you're going to get your money's worth. If you want to buy them new and have perfectly new ones, go for it. I'm a purveyor of used books because just like my clothing, I try to recycle whenever I can. So this is sort of a different version of that. Um, and I just recently picked this one up, Matthew Nagy's Modern Maker 3, which is the hand stitches for garment construction. I flipped through it. It is, it is pretty good. I mean, he did, he did his homework. It's, it's great. And if you're not a tailoring person, this is going to help. I mean, he gives great instructions. There's great pictures, what you're supposed to be creating. I'm very, very, very pleased with this purchase. Let me see if I can put this back in here one-handed. Yes. There's enough room, luckily, on here. There we go. Now I have his Modern Maker 1, which is great with the men's doublets. Women's doublets are fashioned a little differently, but if I did want to make clothing for my, my man, I know I'd be using this book a lot. This is a new one that I just got, but it's been out for a while called Tudor Fashion. And I'm very pleased with this one as well. Now this is a hardback. And um, yet again, great pictures, great resources. Um, not as much on the patterns. This is more about the research. You got reference paintings, which is always important. But I do like that they have images of people wearing the clothes. That to me made this book. And La Piste de Resistance. When it comes to Tudor fashion, for me, that silhouette is just sexy. It is just great. This would be a, about a 15, about 1500s, so early 1500s, maybe 1505, no more than 1510 at the latest, because you have the cuffs, you have your kirtle, and you have your gabled headdress, which is what we call it now. This would have been just known as an English hood, but I love that they do have the texture here. This could be an embroidered, but I mean, that just depends on the situation. This is normally silk. Just so pretty. Great book. I'm, I'm very pleased. I need to dig into this one a lot more. So besides that, now we have the ones I'm most familiar with, the ones that I've sort of truly studied in a much more detailed format is the Tudor Taylor books. Uh, Tudor Taylor goes over specifically historical clothing making for a gentry and I would say uh, nobility. They're coming out with a new one here in a couple months called the typical Tudor, which go over more middle class and lower class clothings, just because there was so much information. It's 
you know, you gotta clip what you can put in one book and then make a new new book because, well, there's only so much information and you don't want something that's the size of a Bible. Because I'm sure they have plenty of research to that effect. So the Tudor Child goes over children's clothing patterns and it's fantastic. I use it for doll patterns because page 150, yes, I have it memorized, um, has their doll pattern, which is great. And it functions very beautifully, which is, is what I like. I like the historical research, but I also like the utilitarian construction of it. And then you dress the doll after you've put the linen or linen-like canvas to make the body. Then you're making all of the outer clothes out of the fine materials. It's just it's a great way of, of using cabbage, to be honest, is making doll clothes. Of course, I kind of do it the other way around. I make the doll clothes and then make sometimes clothing for myself. Sometimes, not always. And I do have the Queen's Servants. This is the King's Servants that are also written um, with the Tudor Taylor authors and still very great research, great images, and there's some patterns in them to a certain extent. More research than patterns, but still really great information if you're studying the time frame. My, me, I really love the Tudor time frame from 1500s to, to 1603. I mean, I, I will eat it up. That is, that is my jam. And Take Five Bows, which actually is about finger loop braiding, which was done a lot in England. And I can do, oops, excuse me, general finger loop braiding, but this one has other patterns, so I can try some other things for ties for the clothing from the Tudor, Tudor Taylor. A Lost Country Life is specifically in regards to items from also England that talks about crafts. So, how the English folk lived, worked, th threshed, old fleece, no corn, brewed. It's a very used book, but uh, a great research item for country English life. So, put down here for now and put it back later. And then I have the Farmer's Almanac Home and, and Wisdom book, which lifestyle books are important too. It's good to have reference material. But that, folks, completes our view of my upstairs library. If there's a particular book you have questions on, feel free to ask. If you have any suggestions for other videos you'd like to see, put them down in the comments below. And if you would like to subscribe, well, more than, I'm more than happy to, you know, make more wonderful videos for everybody. I do have other books up here. This is uh, research images of dolls. This is a research paper written by Historical Scotland in regards to dolls of Mary, Queen of Scots, because I will print out a research paper in full entire color because I am that chick books that are from the 17 and 1800s that are printed and I put them in fabric covers to protect them not like pamphlets and then the McGuffey's reader series which is normally how most people learn to read 1700s and after yes we love history in this house anyway mild other bookshelf adventures so I hope everyone has a great day as I said, if you have questions or like to subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Thanks. Bye.